You're listening to The Jam Fire Show, all about movies. And today, my guests are award-winning filmmakers, Andrew Jenks and executive producer Dan Goodman. And we're going to be talking about their brand new documentary entitled Billion Dollar Babies, The True Story of the Cabbage Patch Kids. And for anybody who lived through the 80s, you'll know who the (laughs) Cabbage Patch Kids kids are all about. So welcome to the show, Andrew and Dan. Thank Thank you. you for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, this is this is kind of this was a very fascinating documentary. Who knew there were all so many <laughs> stories behind uh, the Cabbage Patch Kids? That's right. I so, think people will be surprised when they find that out. I think so too. And how it started the Black Friday craze that we still live through every every day after Thanksgiving, every Friday That's after right. Thanksgiving. So, That's Andrew, right. I understand you were kind of, um, first of all, I always want to know how projects came about. So who started this project first? Dan, did you bring it to Andrew? Andrew, did you bring it to Dan? How did this come about? Yeah, you know, we we were um, uh, just on, on our side thinking about uh, that toward the end of COVID, people were just sort of coming back into stores toward the tail end of, uh, you know, the holiday season. And we thought, man, that's going to be the first time people are back in stores after COVID, they're going to go crazy over the holidays. And it kind of naturally led to us thinking about, um, you know, Cabbage Patch Kids and and that craze. And we started looking into it and, you know, sort of realized it was the first time that retail shopping turned violent. I mean, there were there were, you know, toy fads before, but nobody was hospitalized for, you know, going out and buying toys. Um, And, you know, we've we've known Andrew for a long time and, you know, just sort of immediately kind of went to him and said, what do you what do you think about this? Do you think there's an idea here? Do you you know, do you feel like we're we're just, uh, you know, talking to ourselves or what have you? And, you know, he loved it. Uh, And we just you know, we just kind of never looked back from there. Wow. And so it didn't take that long to make this movie then, Andrew. Uh, to make the movie, uh, I think it took somewhere around a year and a half. Um, we, 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 you know, got started and we were filming all, you know, different, different interviews, doing a lot of research. And Xavier Roberts, the creator of Cabbage Patch Kids, uh, we didn't even have uh, him signed up to, to do an interview. Uh, in fact, we couldn't even find him. Right. Um, so so that was... That. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was many, many months in the making. So yeah, tell tell us about that, because it was hard to find Xavier Roberts and um, he hadn't done an interview, what, in 40 years or 20, a long time. Right. So you didn't even have more recent footage or anything about him. So that's tell right. Us a little bit about how you located him and finally got uh, convinced him to to do this uh, documentary. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, uh, he hadn't done an interview in in about 25 years. And, and the interview he did do was all of about two and a half minutes. Uh, he had never done an interview that where everything was kind of on the table. And so I spent many months uh, with our, with the team at Believe Entertainment and NBC Universal, just trying to track him down. And I couldn't even find like a picture of him. Um, I found a yearbook from his uh, high school and was able to call a few of his classmates and, and try and see where where they thought he was. And there was all these rumors and whispers that he's in France these days and, and, and these, and these sorts of things. Um, we had a couple, uh, I had a, a private investigator involved to try to try and help. And, you know, eventually uh, we did get, we did get in, in touch with a coworker of his. Uh, she brought it to him. I think they were, I don't want to speak for them, but I, I think they were a little skeptical of doing it, but uh, you know, he's getting older as as we all are, but he's getting older in, in age. Uh, we were making the documentary one way or another. Uh, that's not like a threat, but we were we were making it no matter what. And, you know, uh, I think this was uh, a chance uh, for him to really share his side of of things. And and what I told both of them was, you know, I'm not a, a gotcha filmmaker um, and watch, you know, watch anything I've done in the past and and let that be you know something that that may help you determine what to do because I, I'm not someone that that you know only plays one side or the other and so so I, I think that was some of the you know some of the backstory there in terms of in terms of tracking him down. 
And then uh, once you tracked him down, um, how was he to interview? I mean, he seems in the in oh, the he's film. he was great. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he, he great. Yeah. You know what? We were really fortunate because I mean, they were so hospitable and so terrific. And like Andrew said, he. You know, we didn't know what to expect. We we're like, I don't know, maybe he's not going to want to talk about a lot of this stuff. Maybe he'll walk out of the interview if we ask him some of the tougher questions. I, we had no idea. We'd never met him. We didn't know anything about him. Uh, but he's just um, exactly, I think, how we've captured him in the film. And he's just, uh, he was really an open book. I mean, we 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 tackled topics head on with him and he gave his side of the story. And I think that... Um, like I said, kind of at the, the top of our conversation, I think people are going to be surprised at how nuanced this story is. You know, we, we really did not want to make the Wikipedia, you know, history version of this. You can read about the history. We wanted the insights and things that you haven't heard and uh, and kind of the first hand accounts, because only the people who were there can tell you how they felt. You can't read that in Wikipedia and you can't know these things. And you know, uh, being able to get him to go through and kind of recount all those things. It was, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a special interview. Um, and I just love the fact that, you know, if this is any insight into his personality, he, he had no idea what was going on with the craze. And he tells a great story about going to a big box store. He had to pick something up and he tried to walk in the door and there's this line of people and they start yelling at him to get to the back of the line. He's like, what you, I, I don't, why? They're like, for Cabbage Patch Kids, what's wrong with you? Back of the line. <laughs> he had no idea. You know, so they're just yelling at him. He's like, what? What's going on here? You know? So he's just, you know, it was a great, it was a great testament to kind of just his, his perspective on things. And it was a, it was a great story. And there's lots of that stuff that you'll find in the film. There is, there is. Well, let's, let's talk about, uh, talk about a little bit about Martha Nelson Thomas, because who knew that about that, you know, that yeah. how did you uncover that story, Andrew, when you were doing this, did you know about her in advance? No, um, but uh, I did not absolutely no I did not and and as we started to do some research uh there was some you know whispers or, or rumors that that you could find online uh about Martha and so yes in in the 70s she had come up uh with her own doll called doll babies um and she would sell them in in areas kind of around uh around where she she was from uh in in Kentucky and uh, her and Xavier Roberts um, uh, had met and had uh, discussed about maybe doing doing some business. And so what I learned was there had been a lawsuit uh, in the early 80s over over this. And if you had told me during the beginning of this movie that I would be calling up, you know, a variety of of courthouses in Georgia looking for affidavits and exhibits and court transcripts and, uh, uh, you know, eyewitness uh, statements, uh, I would have said, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but, you know, we really, we really did a deep dive and, and I, I read hundreds of, of, of uh, pages of, of these, of these court cases and, and really got an understanding because there is a larger question that we kind of dive into in, in the film as to, you know, what is, ripping someone off and stealing something from them and what is inspiration and i think that's a question with with a lot of artwork and and something that we delved into and and something that xavier uh had never talked about publicly and um so while i think originally we were scheduled to just do a one hour interview with him um to his credit it, it lasted yeah. several hours yeah and we got in the weeds on on kind of everything and so we thought that was important to cover uh, it was also for me, I think, important to cover Martha's story and, and what she had accomplished. And I think um, I'd like to think we were we were able to do that and, and give her a voice that that hadn't really been out there. Yeah, you did. And and so, Dan, you know, you interviewed the children of Martha. Martha passed away. Yeah. Yeah. 2013. Um, and so you yeah. were able to interview. How how was that? How did they feel about being interviewed and talking about their mother's story? Yeah, I think they felt it was important to get her story out there on a larger platform. You know, um, the sort of the nature of Martha's art and her, you know, I don't know, I guess the way she operated was really focusing on her work more as art and local folk art. 
Uh, so the idea of her having a large voice or a large platform and the, you know, it's just not, it just wasn't endemic to the way that she conducted herself. So I think that, that both her kids, as well as, you know, kind of the folks in her orbit, um, Jack, her, her longtime friend and lawyer and, uh, another friend of hers, uh, Guy Mendez. Um, I think they all just, they felt like they just, they just wanted to be heard. I mean, like so many of us. Right. And, and I don't think it was. And this was important to us. I don't think it was about vengeance or gotchas or anything like that. It's just it's just acknowledgement. It's not even about the money, right? It's just about recognizing somebody who did something. I think Xavier kind of was like that. And it would have been very easy for us to make a this one's the villain, this one's the good guy kind of a movie. But I think we made we took kind of great pains to make sure that we let people decide and we really, you know, life is messy. It's not black and white. And and we really wanted to delve into the, the, the gray areas and let people um, make and form their own conclusions about all of it, you know? And you did that well, very well. Be, um, it Thank was, you. Uh, it, you did it because it was very balanced. I thought that you know, Xavier, the way he spoke about it was really, um, you know, quite, you know, interesting and in how he felt about it and her children. And, you know, we yeah. had, had a discussion afterwards with my partner and I said, she probably yeah. more money after the fact than before, yeah. you know, yeah. Was, yeah. where it, she, she didn't seem to have that business savvy of wanting to take it further. And he did, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what, that's what makes the argument. So who, I don't know. So how do you know who's right? Who's wrong? I mean, it's just different. Right. And that's, what's so interesting is, you know, he he was a, an incredible businessman and had an incredible I mean, he came up with baby land they had hospitals and cabbage births every hour. And I mean, it's still going on. You can go down to Cleveland, Georgia. It's a beautiful facility. It's a it's a really nice place to spend the day. It's in a beautiful area of northern Georgia. And uh, it's still there. They still sell the little people dolls there. They sell Cabbage Patch Kids there. Um, you know, and so he just came up with this very brilliant, you know, kind of marketing uh, scheme. And he was the one who put the licensing deals together. So we just kind of felt like we wanted to present to, you know, viewers the same experience we went through in making the film. It was like, oh, you can't combat that. Oh, well, that's a good point. But oh, but that's this. It's like, oh, well, that's also a good point. So it's just really hard. You know, that's that's what the world is. It's it's just nuanced and it's complicated. It is, but it was it was handled very well, as I said. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, you got, you know, you have great. Um, where'd you get all of this footage? This uh, of everything that went on during that time. I mean, I kind of vaguely re remember. It. And then you have Connie Chung, uh, you know, on there. Just yeah, yeah. And then, Connie's great. Yeah, she is. Oh, she's she, great. Yeah. How did that all come about? Yeah, you I mean, talk about the archive, the, yeah. the art, the the footage was just a beast to to find and and, and swift through. You know the, you know these days with archival footage, if this were a movie from you know today or a few years back, things are certainly much better cataloged. You know, there's you know keywords and searches that you can do to find what you're looking for. You know, we're talking about the early '80s, and so it's pretty messy. Uh, it's hard to you know track down uh certain things that you're looking for and then obviously you have to get the rights to it and who owns the rights to that footage since it's from you know 83 84 uh so that that was uh actually one of the one of the harder parts uh in making this this film was just securing uh all of all of that different footage which was important because you know we wanted it we wanted to bring it to life and uh, you know, it's funny because if this, if Cabbage Patch had come out, let's say in the 70s, uh, you know, there wouldn't have been this kind of footage. It, it was in the early 80s where where news and, and camcorders were able uh, to have the presence that they did, that they could be at malls all over the all over the country. And so they were able to capture that fervor. And so the timing in that sense uh, really worked out. But it, it's definitely a, it's definitely a, been a tricky balance. I mean, there's there's thousands of archive. I mean, like, I mean, we had so much stuff that we went through, um, and then the Connie um, relationship. Uh, we we co-produced this with NBC Universal Syndication Studios, and the Today Show had done one of the more like iconic um, uh, stories on on this, and 
gave Cabbage Patch Kids almost a five minute segment on the Today Show. And Connie's interview, you know, was kind of one of these things that we found. And it just was, you know, lucky that it happened to have been the Today Show and our relationships with NBC. And um, I mean, Connie is the best. She, (laughs) the way she talks about the, you know, how embarrassed she was about the interview. And my favorite thing that she says is, you know, the fact that they gave him a five minute segment on Cabbage Patch Kids was like a giant ad. And if they had had a world, you know, Middle East world leader, uh, not even sure that they would have done (laughs) five minutes with a world leader. So it was just, you know, it, it was just great. And and I think everybody obviously appreciates the, you know, the pop culture moment of, of that, that Connie kind of represents. And she's just, she's amazing. She's just absolutely amazing. Yeah, she is. And it was good to see her too. You know, we haven't seen her in a long time. Yeah. What, do you, in doing this, do you have any thoughts about how this caught fire? the way it did after filming this? Andrew, why don't you answer that first? And then Dan, you can give me your thoughts on it. Yeah, no, I mean, there are are several, several reasons. Um, You know, after it it initially took off, which certainly we could also talk about why that happened, uh, there quickly was a a shortage of of Cabbage Patch Kids. And so it's interesting because in some ways it, it comes down to like, you know, econ 101 that you learned back in the day of of supply and demand and once people realized uh, oh wow these dolls are out and they're really hard to get i want one Uh, i need one and uh, the government actually ended up um, fielding a a a false the u.s government um, put forth a claim uh, saying that coleco was falsely advertising um, coleco the maker of cabbage patch kids because they were harassing children by running ads for dolls, which were not available. So Cabbage Patch Kids actually had to discontinue further advertising. They make this big announcement that they'll no longer be doing commercials. And of course, what did that do? That just created even more of a craze. And so I think that that actually played a big role, the fact that there was a shortage and that created just this kind of mania that that we really ended up seeing. Yeah, I, I also think we spend a lot of time kind of talking about just the overall societal conditions and what was happening. You know, it was really interesting just how, you know, uh, the parents of these kids were parents who grew up, you know, as as kids of parents coming out of like the Great Depression and they didn't have things. And then as they were coming out, you know, in the late 70s into kind of an economic boom in the early 80s, there's kind of this desire to give to your kids things that you didn't have or that you couldn't have. And when you combine that with the technology that um, Coleco really smartly was able to uh, harness to create a mass market customized product with different hair and skin tones and eye color and dimples and You know, it's these all of these things together between wanting to do for your kids, having the right economic conditions and creating something that really resonated with kids in a way that just hadn't before kind of created this this perfect storm. And we spent a lot of time talking about all of those things that sort of just lined up perfectly. Right, right. It's just fascinating. How did you find the couple that (laughs) the prosies? (laughs) That just blew they're great, away. Joe and Pat. <laughs> All right, let's both of you can talk a little bit about that. Did yeah, go ahead, Andrew. Know a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. So when I was when I was researching online, uh, and I thought, you know, uh, we had to find real real fans and, and lovers of of Cabbage Patch Kids, and there was a museum uh, of Cabbage Patch Kids that existed. And it was by uh, this 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 one couple that that had had it for many years. It was very popular. Um, and so I tracked them down and they were just such experts on the topic. And uh, so they they agreed to do an interview. The museum is no longer um, they had they had since since moved on. But, yeah, they were they were uh, they were something else. You know, they're they uh they reveal in the film which 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 their own kids did not did not know although now they do that 
they actually uh, their caskets are going to be a little bit bigger for f after they pass when they pass because they want room uh, for their favorite Cabbage Patch kids to go with them. So they were uh, they were amazing. They're lovely people. And uh, we were really great to to be able to 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 interview them for the film. Oh, they were great. They were really great. And they added so much to it. <laughs> no, but... They've got great flair. They're just, the, you know, and they brought their they brought their kids because nobody calls them dolls. They're babies or kids. Uh, you know, as a lot of people did, they brought a lot of people, everybody brought their kids to the interviews and it's just great. They sat down and just, I mean, it wasn't even, we didn't ask them to do it. They just <laughs> sat down with their Cabbage Patch kids on their laps and just, you know, carried on like a, all, you know, normal, but they're, 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 they're lovely people. They're, they're, they're great. I mean, and think about, I mean, a museum with 6,000 different Cabbage Patch kids they had at one time. I mean, they had the largest collection. Um, and you know, this, this massive 6,000 square foot, uh, warehouse that they had on display for this museum. I mean, they were all in as, as you would say. Yeah. And it's unbelievable. I can't imagine what that collection is worth nowadays. Yeah. Well, they sold a lot of it. They sold a lot of it. They sold most of it. I think they've kept about, what did they say? 491 kids that they have in their bedroom. Yeah. Uh, and, and then a couple others like scattered throughout the house. Uh, but the rest of them, they, they've since parted ways with, they've sold the collection. I wonder what their children think about all of this. Yeah. <laughs> I think they think the kids think they're nuts, <laughs> but they don't to, care. They're just great. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been good to interview the children. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We should have. Yeah. <laughs> to see. Oh, what, what, how do you feel about mom and dad? Yeah. <laughs> Did you compete uh, with those, those, those it's, babies? <laughs> it's part of their charm. It's part of their charm. Well, you know, you, uh, Andrew, you said you did this in a year and a half. I find that phenomenal because I do a lot of interviews and a lot of documentaries take years and years and years to put together. Yeah. The fact that you were, and, and you had to be a detective to try to get Xavier Roberts uh, to interview him. Uh, the fact that you were able to put this together in a year and a half, uh, what do you attribute that to? I mean, because that is unbelievable to put together a documentary so quickly. And and it's a well-made yeah. documentary. It's a it's a yeah. really well-made documentary. Thank you. Oh, thank yeah. you. That's, <laughs> that's really nice of you. Um, you know, just we were we were we were going at, uh, on all cylinders, working weekends, <clears throat> uh, editing while we were still filming. And so there was just a lot of moving parts at at once and you know luckily the um you know nbc universal universal syndication studios were were up for financing the film uh even before xavier roberts said he would do an interview and i think you know a, a lot of a lot of places may not uh have been open to taking that kind of risk they always want like a perfectly packaged you know documentary with with every element in place and so we were just doing a lot of things a lot of things at at once and um, we just had a, you know, a very dedicated team to, to really making it happen. That's, it's great. For, um, fabulous that, 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 that's, it was the most difficult part of, of putting together this wonderful documentary. I think the, the, just the sheer amount of moving parts, uh, that, you know, like Andrew said, we're dealing with all at the same time. I mean, uh, Andrews like was relentless in pursuing <laughs> Xavier and some of the other folks. And so, you know, while he was going down that road, we were pulling archives, we were hunting down other interviews, we were trying to put the storyline together, we were negotiating with, you know, Neil Patrick Harris and finding Connie. And I mean, it's just, you know, but it's also the fun of making it because, you know, we're all, I guess, a little bit nuts to be in this business to begin with. So um, there's a thrill in the chaos of it all because out of it comes like somehow <laughs> a cohesive story that we're excited about um and you know i think because of all these moving pieces it's a it's a film and it's a story that i think most people won't expect coming out of cabbage patch kids um in that it's got a lot more heart and it's got a lot more insight and a lot more commentary about you know what we've become as a society um and um and some and some really interesting new elements of the origins of this you know beloved brand um that nobody's ever heard before you know because nobody's ever talked about it at, at this depth so um you know i think we're hoping at, anyway that that people really enjoy it and, and and be surprised about the depth of, oh. of the topic to discuss 
Well, anybody who grew up in the 80s or yeah. children in the 80s, can this movie be seen, uh, Dan? Yes. Uh, CabbagePatchFilm.com. Uh, it's got the trailer. It's got the list of theaters. You can buy tickets and all that good stuff. Good, good. But it will be in the theaters. Yes, it'll be in theaters starting Black Friday. Perfect. Appropriately. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, it's a great documentary. Uh, everybody, I mean, it, even if you didn't know about Cabbage Patch, it's a great story. It's a yeah. well done film and and just enjoyable. You can take your kids. It'll be fun for them yes. to see it too. So. We hope so. Yeah. Wish you most, both of you much success with uh, Million Dollar Babies, the true story behind the Cabbage Patch Kids. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.